You may have wondered where our Christmas traditions come from. What does a pine tree have to do with the birth of Jesus? Where does Santa Claus come into the picture? Is he an old pagan deity that has been Christianized? And who was the first person to try and kiss someone under a mistletoe? Because of the peculiar nature of many Christmas traditions, a lot of people assume that they have a pagan origin. That Christians repurpose ancient pagan rituals to try and convert pagans to Christianity. On the surface, this doesn't sound implausible, but when we dive into the historical data, we will see there is little to no paganism in Christmas. These are the top 10 origin stories of Christmas traditions. Number 10. Krampus Krampus used to be a minor Christmas character, celebrated in parts of Europe, sometimes with events known as Krampus runs. But in the past few decades, he has become more popular around the world, especially after a movie was made featuring the character, which drastically changes the way he's traditionally depicted. Krampus looks nothing like Santa Claus, and instead resembles a furry, devilish, goat-like creature. In fact, the word Krampus is derived from the Middle German word for claw. Often it has been assumed Krampus was some type of pagan deity, and that he was later incorporated into Christmas traditions, with theories suggesting Krampus was the son of Norse deities Loki or Hel. But there's no medieval or ancient sources which support such a connection. The Krampus tradition doesn't even originate from the region of Scandinavia, but from the region of Austria and Bavaria, where there are various Krampuses. The distinct Christmas version didn't appear until the 19th century. He was printed on postcards in the 1880s, and the imagery likely derived from Catholic depictions of the devil. Krampuses were one version of the many dark companions of Santa Claus. While Saint Nick would bring gifts to the good children, Krampus, or another dark companion, would come and punish the bad children. These were called child terror figures, from which Krampus became the most popular. Prior to this in Germanic regions, there were various Nicholas plays, where Nicholas would dialogue with the devil and eventually defeat him. The devil would be dressed in features we associate with the modern version of Krampus, and often during the sermon, there would be an interlude where several Krampus-looking figures would run through the crowds. So most modern traditions associated with Krampus can be traced back to European folk traditions or plays featuring the devil and Saint Nicholas, not pagan tales. Number 9. Yule Logs Yule Logs are traditionally burned around Christmas, and people will gather around them to tell ghost stories or celebrate the season. Yule Logs sound pagan, and many assume they trace back to the ancient pagan holiday of Yule. But there is little to no evidence to support this. The word Yule doesn't necessarily refer to a pagan holiday. It's a very general word that has multiple meanings. Yule has even been a last name. Jacqueline Simpson and Stephen Rode point out, the word in various spellings means a loosely defined midwinter period, not a single day, in the early languages of most Germanic and Scandinavian countries. The first mention of a log burned around Christmas comes from Robert Herrick's poetry collection of 1648, where it is called a Christmas log. It is not referred to as a Yule log until John Aubrey's work from 1686. Prior to that century, we have no evidence of Yule logs, let alone evidence that they can trace back to the holiday of Yule. Simpson and Rhodes say, the antiquity of the word Yule cannot prove the custom's age. There is also no evidence Christmas is a Christianized version of Yule, as none of the modern Christmas traditions can be traced back to Yule, and we're not even sure when Yule was celebrated. Pliny the Elder noted that Gaelic tribes calculated their months according to the moon, and St. Bede, although giving us some mixed information at times, also says they calculated their months according to the course of the moon. This would mean Yule would have moved around from year to year according to the lunar cycles. The chronicler Thitmar observed the Danes sacrificing the pagan gods in January after the six, and the Scandinavian historian Snorri Sturluson says King Hakon the Good established Yule on December 25th to coincide with Christmas. And before that, Yule was celebrated on midwinter night and for the duration of three nights. So there's no evidence Yule logs date back to the holiday of Yule, and there's no evidence Christmas is a holiday derived from Yule. Number 8. Mistletoe The tradition of kissing under the mistletoe has been associated with Christmas at least as far back as the late 18th century, where it seems to have begun among the servant class of England, De Novo. 
we're not really sure how the custom began, and have a hard time tracing it back any further. Mistletoe was already traditionally being used as a Christmas decoration in England. Both William Coles and Robert Herrick mentioned it as a Christmas decoration in the 17th century, but there's not a lot of evidence it was used prior to this period. There's also no evidence this tradition goes back to a pagan custom. Pliny the Elder mentions mistletoe was sacred to the Gauls in France, because they thought it could cure poison and animal infertility. But it was only sacred if found on an oak tree, and it was never associated with a winter festival. Given that the English custom didn't begin until centuries after the Gauls disappeared, and there's no similarities between the customs, there's no reason to think the modern Christmas tradition derived from paganism. Number 7. Nativity Scenes Nativity scenes are a popular Christian tradition that is set up at Christmas to remember the birth of Jesus. Some have suggested they were Christian attempts to mimic pagan idols in pagan sacred spaces, but there's no evidence to support a connection. The first nativity scene was set up by St. Francis of Assisi in 1223 AD. He didn't create it as a Christmas tradition, but his followers promoted the custom and it became associated with Christmas shortly after. It has nothing to do with idol worship, and is merely a holiday decoration to remember what Christmas is really about. Number 6. Gift Giving The giving of gifts has become central to Christmas today, but such a custom was not always associated with Christmas. It can be traced back to around the 1840s, where it replaced an older custom of exchanging gifts between adults on New Year's Day. Children were given gifts on December 6, the feast day of St. Nicholas, who is the patron saint of children. St. Nicholas customs were also moved to December 25th in an effort to make Christmas more family-oriented. This custom has been accused of dating back to pagan traditions, but once again, there's no evidence to support this theory. Gift-giving is a human custom that spans across all cultures. Assuming that the Christmas tradition of gift-giving came from paganism because pagans exchange gifts is as ridiculous as assuming having a family meal comes from paganism because pagans also like to have meals together. Number 5. Stockings The act of hanging a large sock up and filling it with candy and small gifts is an odd tradition, and no one is sure where it came from. In the 19th century, Clement C. Moore mentioned the custom in his work, A Visit from St. Nicholas, more commonly known as Twas the Night Before Christmas. Tanya Gulovich notes in some parts of Europe, kids would leave their shoes out for St. Nicholas, instead of a stocking. So the tradition likely came before Moore's work, and was a European folk tradition that made its way to America. According to one tale, the original St. Nicholas from the 4th century wanted to help a poor man and his daughters. The man was going to have to sell his daughters into slavery. So Nicholas threw three bags of gold into their house, and according to some versions of this tale, one bag landed in a stocking hanging over the fireplace. Regardless of if this story is true or not, the Christmas and St. Nicholas Day tradition of hanging up stockings seems to have come from this story, even if we're not really sure when the custom began. Number 4. Santa Claus Santa Claus has often been accused of being a Christianized pagan deity. Allegedly, someone took old tales of Odin, or Joel Apuki, and transferred them onto the Christian Saint Nicholas to create the modern Santa Claus. But there are no primary sources to support this. The name Santa Claus comes from Sinterklaas, which is the Dutch name of Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas is the patron saint of children, and was a popular saint even among Protestants after the Reformation, especially among the Dutch. The feast day of Saint Nicholas was originally on December 6, and became a popular holiday in Europe by the 16th and 17th centuries. After the American Revolution, Dutch immigrants in New York began to promote many of their traditions, including the veneration of St. Nicholas. At the time in New York, Christmas had devolved into a drunken celebration, and many like Thomas Nast and Clement Moore began to promote the idea Christmas should be a family-centered holiday. St. Nicholas's gift-giving traditions were moved to Christmas, and he was rebranded from a Catholic priest to look like a traditional Dutchman from that time period, including being dressed in a big red suit. After this, Santa became quite popular and was exported around the world over the next 100 years. For example, in 1927 in Finland, a radio broadcaster named Marcus Radio morphed the old pagan deity Joel Lapuki into a Santa figure. So instead of Santa coming from a pagan deity, the evidence suggests Santa evolved from a Catholic saint 
and was later then blended with pagan images in various cultures. Number 3. Father Christmas Many believe Father Christmas was just another name for Santa Claus, but the two figures were not merged until the 19th century. Prior to this, Father Christmas was seen as the personification of Christmas. The first mention of him is in a carol from the 15th century, where he announces the birth of Christ, but he's given the title Sir Christmas. He's also gone by other names such as Captain Christmas, Prince Christmas, and the Christmas Lord. During the 19th century revival of Christmas, he was eventually merged with Santa Claus. So no evidence of a pagan connection here. Father Christmas is just a European tradition where Christmas was personified. Number 2. Christmas Trees Christmas trees are the universal symbol of Christmas. Nothing says Christmas like a decorated pine tree with gifts under it. But despite this, historians are not really sure where the Christmas tree came from. Some believe they date back to paganism, but we have no references to such a tradition in any pagan source. Nothing like a Christmas tree is found in any sources on Yule, Saturnalia, or any pagan winter festival. In fact, the first depiction of a Christmas tree comes from 1576 in Alsace, France, where there was a sculpture of one on a private home. The first mention of Christmas trees is in an Alsace ordinance of 1561, which limits the amount and height of Christmas trees. Many cities claim to be the birthplace of the first Christmas tree, but no one can know for sure. Sebastian Brand in 1494 mentioned bringing pine branches into one's home for New Year's, but doesn't say anything about Christmas. Some attribute the first Christmas tree to Martin Luther. Others attribute it to a legend about St. Boniface. The tale says that pagans were about to attempt a human sacrifice under a sacred oak tree. Boniface cut it down, and when he wasn't killed by lightning, he pointed to the fir tree as a symbol of Christ. Tanya Gulovich highlights a likely origin of the Christmas tree, where they evolved from paradise trees. In the Middle Ages, it was popular throughout Europe to have an Adam and Eve play performed on December 24th because it was their feast day. Naturally, there would need to be a tree, and most trees would have been dead during the winter months, so a fir tree was naturally selected and decorated with apples. In all likelihood, the apples would have been eaten after the play on Christmas Eve or on Christmas morning, and the paradise tree simply became associated with Christmas. So once again, there's no evidence Christmas trees date back to a pagan ritual. Most records on Northern European pagans tell us that they thought the oak tree was sacred. In fact, the word druid means oak seer. We can find references to pine trees in pagan literature, but merely finding references to pine trees is not enough to support any connection to Christmas trees. By that logic, I could say the Christmas tree comes from Isaiah 41, which says that the pine tree is a symbol of the God of Israel. Such a connection would be a stretch, like it is with trying to connect it to any pagan tradition. All the evidence indicates Christmas trees can only be traced back to the Middle Ages. Before we get to number one, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell, so you're updated when new videos are coming out. We have several videos on various topics coming soon, so hit the bell and stay updated to know when these videos are published. Finally, number one, the date of December 25th. There is a lot of speculation as to why the birthday of Jesus is celebrated on December 25th, since the Bible doesn't mention a date. But it is not this way in every culture. The Orthodox Church still celebrates Christmas on January 7th, and early Christians debated about the date, with no one really knowing for sure. We have evidence Christmas was celebrated on December 25th in 336 AD, and we have some indications it was celebrated on this date even earlier. There is one manuscript of Hippolytus of Rome that says Christmas was celebrated on December 25th, which would place the use of the date at the beginning of the 3rd century. Thomas Taley also notes a heretical group called the Donatists, held to church traditions from prior to their split in 311 AD. They didn't keep the introduction of later feasts, like the Feast of the Epiphany, but the evidence suggests they did celebrate Christmas on December 25th, suggesting Christmas was placed on this date prior to 311 AD. Some believe this date was selected as a conscious takeover of a pagan holiday, meaning that early Christians, in an attempt to convert pagans to Christianity, placed Christmas on the same day as a pagan festival to try to convince them to worship Christ instead. But such a theory is unlikely, because like with the holiday of Yule, 
we have no evidence of a pagan celebration happening on December 25th prior to Constantine. Some believe Saturnalia was celebrated on the 25th, but we have no evidence of this. Macrobius says it began on December 17th and lasted three days. During the days of the early Republic, it was said to last seven days, which means it would have ended on December 23rd if you include the 17th. And no early record mentions Christians attempting to transform Saturnalia into a Christian holiday. Some believe December 25th was the date of Sol Invictus, which was believed to be the day celebrating the birth of the sun. Allegedly, prior to Constantine, the Emperor Aurelian established Sol Invictus on December 25th. But Thomas Taley and Stephen Hidgemans note there is no evidence to support such a theory. The Philokalian calendar says Emperor Aurelian honored the sun with chariot races every four years on October 19th through the 22nd. Prior to this, the Julio-Claudian Fasti inscriptions suggest sun festivals were on August 8th, the 9th and the 28th, and December 11th, and maybe October 19th. And there is no source that says Mithra or any pagan deity was born on December 25th. These claims are nothing more than modern fabrications. The only source that might say Sol Invictus was on December 25th comes from the Philokalian calendar, which dates to 354 AD. But it actually does not directly mention the sun, and probably only as an indirect reference. As all it records is, 30 games were ordered for the birthday of the Unconquered One. Which is peculiar, because at other places, the calendar does mention Feasts of the Sun more explicitly. So we cannot be absolutely sure this is a reference to Sol Invictus, but it might be. However, it still postdates Christians establishing Christmas on December 25th. Some note according to the Julian calendar, the winter solstice was on December 25th. This is true, but Ronald Hutton notes we have no evidence of any festival connected with the winter solstice in the Roman Empire. They seem to have just treated the winter solstice the same way we do, as a celestial event and nothing more. Furthermore, Romans were not really sure when the winter solstice actually occurred, and there were a few dates offered other than the 25th. Pliny the Elder says it was on the 26th, and Columella suggests the 23rd. The date of Christmas actually has a more innocent origin. The early Christians had a belief that Jesus would die on the same day he was conceived. Since they believe Jesus died on March 25th, one only has to count forward nine months and you get December 25th. Were they right? Well, such a theory lacks strong evidence, but nevertheless, this is what they believed, and it's the most likely origin for why December 25th was selected as the date of Jesus' birth. So despite the rumors circulating today, there is no evidence Christmas or any of its traditions derived from paganism. It seems a lot of people today realize many of the customs and traditions of Christmas are not found in the Bible, so they must have come from somewhere, and co-opted pagan rituals seems like a good option. It must seem unlikely that European and American Christians could come up with traditions on their own, without stealing them from some ancient predecessors. But this is what the evidence suggests. Furthermore, one often can find that a modern tradition has similarities to an ancient one, but mere association is not enough to derive a causal link. Instead, we have to follow the paper trail through history of the modern tradition and see where it ends. If our sources on Christmas trees end in the Middle Ages, it is unlikely they go back to a time prior to the dominance of Christianity. Merely noting similarities is not enough to show a modern tradition derived from whatever pagan ritual one has found in history. More data must be offered to establish a causal link. As Simpson and Rhodes say, there is an important distinction between showing that a custom or belief is older than Christianity and arguing that when it was found among Christians, it means paganism is still alive. Some aspects of the supernatural, e.g. fear of ghosts and witchcraft, belief in dreams, are so commonplace that they can occur in virtually any period, including our own, and do not correlate with one religion rather than another. There is thus no general framework to support claims that individual folklore items are pagan survivals, and each must be assessed on its own merit. So given the data, there is no evidence Christmas came from paganism.